So in this video, I'm gonna check out Bad Filter Saturn 2. I downloaded the demo version of it because it is pretty expensive, $154, that's a lot of money. So I wanna check it out as the demo because you get all the full features for 30 days, then you have to purchase it to use it any day further than that. So that's perfect. The link will be in the description box where you can download the demo too as well if you wanna try it out. And we're gonna see if it's good or not. Of course I have output thermal, so I'm gonna do a comparison a little later to that in a separate video. So just let me know how you feel about that and how you feel about this plugin. Let's begin. Trap Tendo. So here's Saturn 2 in the flesh, and this is how it looks like. Uh, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is play the demo. It's got a TR-808 snare in there. Plain Jane. Let's drop the music so you can hear it. And what I'm gonna do here is press on this right here because you can resize it. You can do this small one, you can do a medium one, uh, you can do a large one, and my personal favorite, which is extra large because I have a huge uh, screen, uh, high resolution at 1080p. So yeah, uh, with that, I, I really like the UI in itself. It has a special analyzer built into it, so you can actually see that. I also have a special analyzer to the side over here. And that is one of the things I like about it. You have multiple bands here as I just go right into uh, the different features that it has here. So I'm just gonna add uh, up to six bands, which is your only, is the highest amount that you can go. And you know, you have a redo button, a delete button. So I, I'm gonna stick with, uh, well, I'm gonna go with three bands because I think three bands would be very good for this. Um, you can go in on a frequency and you can focus on that frequency and then you can just add distortion by the level. And as you can hear, just from me doing that, that snare is different. Let's hear it in context with the music. Mm. But overall, you can see just from me just doing that simple application, that the snare has changed a lot. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, just play the music again or just play the snare by itself. And now I'm gonna turn off that filter Saturn 2 and you can hear the difference. Not something that I really want to reveal to people of how you can create different snares and stuff like that, but I think it will help people in music because there's not enough tips and people just don't understand different things about sound design. But nonetheless, we're gonna go ahead and play that again. Of course, it has different algorithms that you have. You have subtle tube, clean tube. Let's go ahead and dial in so you can hear the difference. It'll be, so it'll be radical at least. Warm tube, subtle tape which I was on, clean tape, and so forth. And then you start to hear some of the tonal changes in it. Let's go to old tape. And what I'm gonna do is dial in another band here, and then we're gonna go and change that to clean tape. And now we're gonna hear it uh, with another feature that I think is really good. Uh, this feature, uh, that you're hearing right now is the dynamics. Now this is where I think Fab Filter shines at uh, in the reason that it's very simple. You got peak and RMS. So if I wanna do RMS and compress it, I can change that transient. So what I'm gonna do is turn off the middle band and go over here. You can see how flexible it is. So I can just tap on that particular band I'm working on and let's turn up the dynamics. You can hear it. It's crazy. And if you're wondering, I, I got that sample from my TR-08, which is a boutique version of the TR-808. Buy it used, please. Don't buy it brand new. <laughs> Y'all know the business if you follow me. But I'm go over here, I'm gonna turn this on. Uh, you also have feedback too, if you have feedback. Let's go ahead and turn this band off so you can hear the feedback. Turn the feedback up. You can add 
different nuances in that. Change the frequency. Turn it down. So if you're looking for that different sound to your music with distortion, uh, this provides a whole lot to the table. Of course, you can change the mix. So I can turn band two down. And, and you know, just dial back frequencies, change the dynamics. Let's go a little bit up. Let's go back with the frequency feedback. Another thing too, as well, I want to focus on is the tone right here. You can mess with bands within the bands. And I think that's very, very cold blooded, to be honest. So what I'm going to do here is uh, play the snare course so we can hear it. And we're going to turn up different frequencies, turn down different frequencies uh, within that frequency. <laughs> and let's go and get rid of some of uh, the lows here. And now let's play it in context with the whole music. And totally different vibe. Uh, the reason why I'm not using the low frequencies is because I, I don't want to affect the low frequencies. Even though if I was to affect the low frequencies in this, you get a, a meteor snare. I kind of like my snare to be a little thin so it can cut through the mix. Uh, but you might want to add uh, that into your snare or whatever sound that you're trying to affect. Uh, last but not least, uh, before I go over here and show you on the 808, uh, you have different sources of modulation. Uh, you have a slider, you have X Y control, and you have X L O F O, and then you have envelopes too as well. Applying L F O to something or different kinds of modulation is very simple. Uh, as you can see, I can go into different bands and change the drive, and you know I can uh, link it to another one, have it to this one, uh, apply an amount, and that's going to overall affect the sound some more. And just click on that source. And then you can add more frequencies, make it faster, slower, change the glide. Uh, you can change the note. You can change the, it to re-trigger. Uh, you can draw it in there and make it longer, shorter. You can change it from sine, linear. Uh, you can get pretty much a shape of an LFO and change it. Uh, you can do random. Uh, it's just up to you or what you want to do with it. Last but not least, let's go ahead and affect some 808. So what I'm going to do here is close this one out here and I'm going to copy this to my sub lab track, which has my 808 on there. And I'm going to uh, unsolo and then go back over here. Uh, we're going to uh, mess with it on the 808. Of course, it's going to sound pretty darn decent on the 808 here. So...
Oh, I almost forgot one thing. There's some other things that if I bring my focus over here, you can change linear phase. Let's go ahead and hear that linear phase off. Linear phase on. There's a high Q. So basically high Q will add a little bit more to the CPU here. Um, it could be, it depends on what your CPU is if you really want to uh, add that in there. And you know, there are a couple other features as well. You have feedback and you also can, you know, change the input gain as well. Those are things I wanted to point out before I stop, stop it. And of course you have help over here, which you can see that I have interactive help hints on, which will help you, you know, if you, you didn't under, understand anything in here. And I definitely like that you you can undo stuff too as well. So tell me how you feel about this plugin. As far as the cons go, well, you can add extra effects like output thermal, but uh, when it comes down to it, it's a multi-band distortion that has its own workflow to it. Very clean UI, uh, fat filters always shine with very clean, understandable UIs. And with that, it doesn't seem very CPU heavy as well, but I'm judging that towards my i7 9750H, which I don't think everybody has a six core processor, but you know, with a six core processor, it works very well, nonetheless. So that's pretty good. Do I give it the stamp of approval? Well, yeah, yeah, pretty worth it. Pretty damn worth it.